Hello and welcome to Epping Stadium in Melbourne's north. It's a rainy old day, but it's good football weather for the Preston Lions visiting Melbourne Victory in a clash that will prove crucial in the MPL3 promotion race. I'm Josh Parrish. I've got Lockie Flanagan with me today. We do apologise for the filming position. We are forced to film at ground level today due to the closure of the Epping Stadium media box. So we've done our best to avoid the poles and fences in the way and give you a clear view of the field. But unfortunately, due to the elements that has come at the expense of a higher vantage point, we've got a fantastic atmosphere though today. We've got a huge Preston away turnout and I cannot wait for this one to get started. Lockie, what do you make of this? Well, it's just, it's just darn exciting, Josh. The, the, the one advantage you get from being in this position is that you can hear those Preston fans in full voice, and what a fine voice they do have today. They'll need that voice, the Preston Lions team out there today, to, to carry them through. You know, it was a really competitive game between these two sides last time. It took an absolute thunderbolt to, to settle these sides, so it'll be a close one, and it's an important challenge as well for Preston. They lost for the first time in the league in some pretty shocking conditions last week against Springvale. So this is the first time for them to uh, show what they've made of when they've been put on the back foot and step back and uh, retake that top spot. We'll take you through the starting lineups today. Left back, number 19, Noam Sekolovsky, 39 years young. He's been a really consistent performer for Preston this season. Amidst a lot of injuries in the back line, we've got couple of returning players today. Number 18, Andrea Roxandic comes back from a groin strain that he suffered against Melbourne City. And number three, James Harron. Everyone will be pleased to see him on the pitch rather than as my co-commentator. I don't know. I feel like I've got big shoes to fill today <laughs> after last week. I much prefer him to see him out there. And uh, he returns from suspension after picking up his fifth yellow card against City. At right back, number seven, Benji Leviticos, who did such a fantastic job on the Lions Den as my co-host on Thursday night. The gauntlet has been laid down. Last few guests on the Lions Den have all gone on to score on the weekend. And Hayley Masidi for the women's team continued that streak yesterday with two goals of her own against Eltham Redbacks in a 4-0 win. Fantastic job by the women's team on Friday night, rather. In midfield for Preston today, we've got number 23, Matthew Kandari, the captain, number eight, Rob now Mosky, who had an excellent season to date. Not gifted the services of number six, Lockie Royce, who received a red card last week against Springvale White Eagles. Two yellows. Number 10, Robert Stambolziev. He used to be playing a central position today as opposed to his usual job out wide. Number 24, Terence Carter is on the right flank. As we have a chance here for victory coming through Jimmy Panaris. It's squared into the box. It's a shooting chance for the captain and it's deflected behind for a corner. Early opening for Melbourne victory and it was Luca De Silva who puts his head to his hands. What a chance, Lockie. Yeah, maybe a little bit of rust there from Rock Sandwich just losing the ball and allowing victory to come through in that space that the big centre back left behind. An early warning sign for Preston. We were in little doubt that this was going to be a, a competitive fixture and victory are, are showing that early. Corner taken by victory. Bozanowski's in there. It's out to the back stick and a save off the line by Leviticos. Again, they can't quite get it clear. Referee Lockie Kiever stops play for an injured player in the six-yard box. That's Edmund Lupanchu on the turf, but big Matt Bozanowski, always a danger, always one to watch out for on those set pieces. I think it was William Wilson who had the follow-up shot, nearly had it in to the back of an otherwise unguarded net, but some good foot stoppages on the line for Preston. Last ditch defending. You expect nothing less from the Lions boys, uh, keeping them level for the moment. I do apologise for the fourth official in the way. He's only uh, doing his duties. Joseph Karen, shout out to Joseph, doing a great job. Looking mighty fine in the head to toe tracksuit as well. Just to finish that Preston lineup, Chris Davies starts up front, the number 77. Terence Carter, number 24, on the right flank, and Ryu Yamagishi, number 26, on the left. 
Go through the Melbourne well, Victory lineup today as well, which is pleasingly numbered from 1 to 11. Very so, traditional stuff. So satisfying. From manager Daniel Greystone. Number one, Marco Bullwich is between the sticks. Number two, Thomas Lambiris. Number three, Matthew Bozanovsky, the towering centre half, who so impressed at BT Connor Reserve in the first meeting of these two teams. Number four, Asen Ishak. Number five, Edmund Lupanchu. Number six, Luca De Silva. Number seven, Jimmy Pinaris. Number eight, William Wilson. Number nine, Ryan Lethley. And number 10, Josh Varga. And number 11, Dan Darcy Anastovsky. Vitikos with the interception. He hacks it clear. Frenetic start to this game. It's been victory on top so far. Yamagishi has been ruled offside. So a late flag there. It's certainly a late spot by the officials. That's a very interesting one. I thought, I thought Chris Davies had done well to to leave the play. He was clearly the offside player, but Yamagishi yeah, must have strayed behind the last line of defence as well, perhaps. Either that, or the referee, or the linesman rather, had decided that Davies was still interfering. But I thought he did a very good job of staying out of the way. Matthew Symes forced to stretch out those long legs of his and do a bit of running. Ever presence between the sticks for Preston. He can hold his head high despite last week's defeat. Made a number of excellent saves in the very soppy conditions. Reflection goes high and it might fall for Davies, not quite. Sekolowski intercepted by De Silva. Oksandic. As the measure of Lethlian. Ozanovsky for victory. And that ball went out of play. We'll have a throw in for Preston now. That'll be an interesting battle to watch all day, I think, between Lethlian and Rock Sandwich. Not very often that the junior of the two players is, is the taller one and the, and the bigger bodied. So uh, certainly Andrea Rock Sandwich will, will have his hands full today in a literal and, and a figurative sense. If this rain holds off, we might be able to move to a more advantageous broadcast position on the opposite side of the field. We're just a little cautious of the uh, safety of our gear and the chance for Preston here. Davies nipping in intelligently on the blind side. And he wins a free kick in a really promising area. That was veteran smarts from Chris Davies. He just jinked his way around. The oncoming defenders and a very, very promising free kick. We've seen Preston score some spectacular goals this season. It's, at least from this vantage point, it's, it's looking like it could be another one of those. Will this be a training ground rehearsed routine or a simple strike on goal? It's Chris Davies. And Rob Naumovsky. It is Davies to curl one, and he can't keep it down. But Preston's first shot in anger this afternoon. Didn't get the dip, unfortunately. There'll be plenty more chances you'd expect for Chris Davies. He's made himself, as you said, Josh, the attacking chances have been few and far between so far for Preston, but Chris Davies has certainly been very energetic and provided a lot. I suspect his influence will only grow as we continue in this game. We were talking about the uh, tracksuit of the fourth official, Joseph Karen before. Great comment that's come in from Steve Nikoloski. He says maybe he shouldn't be wearing the tracksuit. He'll put on an invisibility cloak instead. Uh, I'll get in contact with Harry Potter, and we'll see what we can do at the halftime break. It's a strong challenge coming in there. Matthew Kondari tries to pick it up, but Monkey Kivas brings it back for the earlier infringement. And to add to his woes, Matthew Kandari gets himself an early booking as well. Number two for the season as Vitri brings some medical attention onto the field, I believe, for Ace and Ishak over on the far side. It was a pretty hot and heavy challenge from Kandari. Monkey Kivas didn't have to think too long about it.
Great to hear both sets of fans in very fine voice today as the sun starts to creep out over the top of Epping Stadium. Warm welcome to all 143 of you watching at the moment, getting set to see victory take this free kick deep in their defensive territory. That one's launched forward into the path of Lethleen. It misses both victory attackers. Leviticos goes back to Symes. Wants to control a bouncing ball, but distributes very nicely to Sekolovsky. Got a little bit of room to manoeuvre. Cut out well by William Wilson. And Sekolovsky just asking Ria Yamagishi just to drop a little bit shorter. It's not necessarily known for his exploits as an attacking fullback is Noam Sekolovsky, so maybe does want a bit more support as he drives forward. Speaking of driving forward, that was James Harron. Confident stuff from the big centre half. Good touch from Rob Stambolziev, but the pass didn't match. It's Josh Varga, the pint-sized victory playmaker who wins a free kick off Leviticos, and it's taken quickly, but too quickly for the referee's liking. Here is Lambiris for victory. Couldn't keep it in play. Jimmy Panaris losing out, but De Silva wins it back. And now Rock Sandwich with the tackle. And that's a studs up tackle from Luca De Silva. Kiva's trying to that calm things really down as both sets of players steam in for a bit of a melee. And cooler heads need to prevail here for Preston. That wouldn't have tickled. For Noam Sekolovsky, and you imagine Luca De Silva should go in the book for this. I don't know if you saw a yellow card come out. Maybe now. It was a nasty challenge. He did get some of the ball, but he got plenty of the man as well, Lockie. Yeah, I must say, that was a very difficult call for Lockie Kivas to have to make. He's still remonstrating currently with Luca De Silva, who does eventually... Got that yellow card. That's his uh, fifth of the season as well. So even though it wasn't the red that some Preston fans might have hoped for, he'll be rubbed out of the game following against Whittlesey, which is an away game for Melbourne Victory at Epping Stadium. <laughs> Go figure. But yeah, that was really, really risky stuff. From a captain as well to, to throw that kind of challenge. That's Here's a, a bit loose of a risk. Touch. From Jimmy Harron, and that might be punished here for victory. It's a great save from Symes. Varga on the overlap, and he can't keep his shot down. What a chance for Darcy Anastovsky. And what a save, Matthew Symes. Yeah, top work from Symes on the save. Varga ballooned his follow-up right over the crossbar. But we were talking about it on, on the Lions Den this week, Josh. Matthew Symes, that game last week, we know it didn't end the way that, uh, that Preston wanted it to against Springvale. Four goals to one, but Symesy was still one of, if not the best player on the ground. It could have been more, and we're seeing why, because he is making some absolutely fantastic saves of late in a fine patch of form, the Preston stopper. It's William Wilson going down. Advantage paid by Kivas. Ishak trying to spread the play. Terence Carter with the sliding challenge, and... Last touch off Leviticos. I think Jimmy Harron might owe Matty Symes a beer after the game for that one. Yes. Bailed him out big time. Big, big bailout from Symesy. As I said, though, he's, he has had to do that a fair bit recently. Here's De Silva, who has schemed and threatened early on, both on the ball and in the tackle. Bozanovsky puts it out of play. Leviticos. Carter couldn't keep it. Now Varga for victory. Chips it forward into the channel. De Silva. He's drifted out wide. Rock Sandwich, right place, right time. It was a bit of a coming together off the ball between Jimmy Panaris and his marker. And loose touch from De Silva, who's 
Persona non grata with the visiting fans after his earlier challenge. Is every touch being booed. I did not wait too long at all to, to launch into those boos for Preston fans. Fair enough. I don't I don't blame them. That was a very, very risky challenge from the youngster. And on a Preston legend, no less, as well. Keep your comments coming through on the Facebook Live. Catherine Summers watching from Perth. Go James Harron, she says. Also, she says, great goalie and goalie. And I couldn't agree more. Yeah, it was just good goalieing. <laughs> yeah. Good goalieing. Fabulous goalieing. Sekolowski to take the throw. Yamagishi lets it run. Stan Bowles here. Rock Sandwich. Harren playing it short for Kandari, who's under pressure here from Wilson. He's coughed it up. The victory press reaping dividends again. Anastovsky couldn't find Panaris. De Silva can eventually. That one went through a few sets of legs before trickling out of play. Sekolovsky restarts and Kandari dropping very deep. Sends it forward down the channel, but asked too much of Chris Davies there. Davies, Stan Bolziev. Kandari's on corner duties today and already signalling the set play before he's gone to take it. We've got now Mosky in the six-yard box. And no fewer than six runners at the top of the area, including Yamagishi, who's just outside. A bit of rotation in there. James Harron rises at the far post. It's off the line. Now Carter in on the goalkeeper who makes a... Good grab under pressure. And James Harron will go into the book after colliding rather cynically with Marco Bulic. I believe it was Thomas Lambiris who came to the rescue for Melbourne victory. That's two saves off the goal line, one for either team. Yeah, well, Harron rose highest and very nearly separated the sides on the scoreline. As you said, good work from Lambiris. To deny Harren, I'm, I wonder whether, maybe it was just the vantage point that's distorting this, but I wonder whether that was going in. Was it bouncing its way across? It seems as though, it's, it's not entirely clear, but it was waiting for someone at the, uh, the back post to really cause some trouble and try and rumble it over the line. Of course, Naumovsky had a crack at looping his header from distance and Carter was trying to gamble in the little battle between him and Marco Bullich, but... Couldn't find the opening, Preston, but they are getting closer. Now Mosky. Excellent work from him. Sekolovsky inside. Rock Sandich. Gee, they must be relieved to have Andrea Rock Sandich back in the side. He's such a cool customer. What a great touch from Yamagishi. Fantastic control. From the man they call Super Sane. Now Mosky trying to send it through a tight gap and he coughs it up. Varga. De Silva collected. And Victory will have a free kick, which Varga is keen to take quickly. Thought better of it in the end. Some insight from Benji Levitikos on Thursday night's show as to the Super Sane lyric in Marquez Walters now that was famous it. tune. I, I re-listened to that on the way up here. It was it was just Major as pump up. it was just as funny on the on the second listen actually. <laughs> Absolute banger! If you haven't heard the effort from the Preston Lions substitute today, released on his SoundCloud, 
But uh, Yamagishi introduced himself to the Preston group chat by sending a selfie and saying, you can call me Goku. So he given, he's given himself the nickname there. It's fantastic. De Silva's ball into Anastovsky. That one's too deep for the big number 11 to have a hope of hooking across goal. Well, interestingly, the, interesting, sorry, that Anastovsky ends up with uh, nearly with the ball after you've brought up Marquez Walters. Because doing a little bit of research, Josh, uh, Anastovsky, Darcy Anastovsky is also in his spare time uh, does a bit of DJing, also has his own SoundCloud profile. So maybe we should put Marquez Walters and Darcy Anastovsky in a room together at full time, depending on the result. Maybe a little little collab. <laughs> if it's a draw, maybe we can have a rap battle for the three points. <laughs> the two number 11s head to head. Ooh, that's a heavy challenge from Wilson on Rock Sandwich, but fair. Kozanovsky. Coolly done by Ishak. Yamagishi applying the pressure, and that's going to be a offside flag up against Ryan Lethlian. Sekolovsky forward. Quick feet from the Japanese dazzler, Ryu Yamagishi, who finds Sekolovsky. This is a great move for Preston. Davies goes down. Carter. And there's no penalty for Preston. A massive shout. The whole crowd and all 11 players went up in unison there. Lockie Kiva's disagreed. Yeah, well, I, I think that Lupancho with the outstretched leg just got a little bit of the ball and pushed it away, mm. uh, which is hard to see from this angle. Maybe that's the only... Kiva's must have... Lockie Kiva's must have seen that. That's the only difference between that them and Preston. And that one almost went all the way in. A miss at the front post. Calamitous bit of victory defending. I think it was Lethlian who is left shaking his head now. Yeah, again, just like the earlier situation with Harren's header, it was just waiting for someone at the back post to kind of bundle it over and really have a crack at it. In fact, I think it was James Harren this time around who was at the back post and was a little bit on his haunches as that one fell out to him. In fairness, you wouldn't be expecting it to go all the way through. Lambiris. Varga. Going to wrestle his way through the cul-de-sac, and now Mosky winning it back for Stambolziev. Davies. For Stambo. Lefleen applying the pressure. It's a victory ball now for Wilson. Lupanchu into Anastovsky. Good defensive work from Terence Carter on that occasion. And this is deft stuff in midfield from Matthew Kandari. What about that run? Just didn't release Davies quite quickly enough. He beat three or four players there. That was an extremely elegant bit of work through the middle. Was William Wilson in the end his legs? He tried to put it through. It was denied passage by Wilson in the end, but came very close. Would have had a lot of space ahead of him if he could get round that one last uh, midfielder. Yeah, and Rock Sandwich has missed it here, and Lethlean is clean through on goal. And victory take the lead. It's Ryan Lethlean who capitalizes on a defensive mistake. Andrea Rock Sandwich, usually so consistent. In the heart of defence or the base of midfield, that's uncharacteristic to say the least. And the home side go ahead. Melbourne victory, 1-0. Yeah, we mentioned how that battle would develop over the course of the day. Lethlian and Rock Sandwich going up one against one another. Well, it's Lethlian who draws first blood, capitalising on, as you said, Josh, an uncharacteristic error from Andrea Rock Sandwich. He won't want to see that one again on the replay, even though I suspect that Louis Eseski will force him to, but an unfortunate one, not just for the player, but for the team as well. Preston were really starting to turn the screw and, and assert their dominance on this game. And uh, a little bit of out of nowhere stuff from Melbourne Victory, riding their luck and putting themselves ahead. But it's very cruel on both Roxanne and Preston. 
Victory did start very, very brightly. Wilson dishing it off to Silva. That one's gone through again. And left lean fouled Harren, who just got in the way in time, but Preston have to sort this out at the back here. Pumped forward, collected by Bullich. It's like Sandich, the player who sent it over the top, didn't really have a willing recipient. That's the problem. Bozanowski switches the field of play. There's not too many willing runners ahead, so decides to go himself, does Ishak. Now Varga. To Lambiris. This is patient play from the Melbourne Victory. They try and switch it back, but Terence Carter very nearly got the interception, but did enough. Did enough to uh, put a little bit of doubt in the mind of the Victory player who was running on, and Preston pick up the throw. Well, Terence Carter hasn't had much joy in front of goal today, really in an attacking sense whatsoever, but his defensive contributions have been very diligent. Worked hard up and down that right flank. I know it's not his preferred position. Both he and Davies would vie for that central role if possible. And I think Davies in the richer goal scoring form at present has every right to occupy it. It's definitely a, a side of the pitch though that could be better utilized by Preston. I think you see you're seeing Chris Davies drop a lot off the front line to receive possession, but he's often coming down onto this left side to support. You know, Yamagishi and Sekolovsky, which makes sense because you know, the fullback you've got playing there isn't necessarily of an attack mind, but maybe Preston just the, the switch of play and opening up those options on the right, encouraging Terence Carter, maybe even Stan Bowles, you have to, to take on a few players on that side, might be a, a decent plan A, a different, different approach for Preston going forward. Ishak. Ball to no one in particular. And that was good defending by Preston on that occasion. Had all the options marked tightly and all bases covered. Back with Symes now. Trying to find a way out of this victory press, which has been so intense in the first half. Sekolovsky. Panaris blocking his path. Preston win the throw. It's taken long, but De Silva anticipating well. And it's Wilson into the feet of Lethlian. Play goes on. Now Mosky winning the loose ball. And Davies getting manhandled. Not rewarded for his troubles by a whistle. Varga for Wilson. One touch play from victory. Breaks down. And surely forearm in the back of Chris Davies. Yeah, Lockie Keeper. Apparently Kiefer's, not. Lockie, Lockie, you Lock, didn't have the view we did. Lockie Keeper's completely missed that one. Again, as you said, not necessarily at the right vantage point, but it was such a blatant one that Bosanovsky threw the arm out after he'd already bowled over Chris Davies. So it was very clear in his intention to, to all accept perhaps Lockie Keeper's in the middle of the park. And perhaps the man that's uh, blocking so much of our shot today should have intervened there. Yeah, not that. Just given a word in the ear of the match official. Even the broadcast side, side linesman would have would have seen that from where he was standing. A surprise. Are they mic'd up today? It doesn't look like they are. You can huh? still throw a flag up. Unless it's some sort of throw FBI it, style, very... Throw it onto yeah. the field like they do in the <laughs> NFL. I don't think the fourth official has a flag, Lucky. He throws something. <laughs> Board. Subs. <laughs> uh, I've taken this too far. Uh, Josh Varga. Left lean for Wilson. For Varga. It's deflected. Oh. And Matty Symes adjusted terrifically well to keep that one out of the back of the net. The entire trajectory of the shot altered by the block. It looped despairingly towards the far post, but 
Matty Symes, such athleticism to get in the way. Yeah, make that two top draw saves today and counting for Matty Symes, again, adding to his tally. It's one of those ones where so often you see the, the goalkeeper's eyes just roll back into the, you know, into the top of their head. There's nothing I can really do about that one with the deflection. It did take a, a wicked change of direction, but uh, fortunately the deflection took a little bit of the pace off it and Symes could get behind it. And no one will be getting behind that corner for Melbourne victory. Stan Bolziev fouled. That one's paid on Lambiris. Aaron restarts Rock Sandwich. Yamagishi couldn't connect. And Bozanovsky plays it safe. Today's broadcast is brought to you by our good friends and partners at the Northern Motor Group in Bandura, proud sponsors of the Preston Lions. They've got end of financial year sales going on at the moment, so you better get in quick before those are done if you're looking for a new vehicle. Ishak. Varga. Defending from now Mosky. And now Carter trying to find his range. Yamagishi almost in on goal. Just couldn't judge the flight of the ball coming over his shoulder. It's a tough one. Yeah, it was a whisker away for Yamagishi. Just needed a touch on that. And yeah, could well, have directed it past the goalkeeper first time. I think the frustrating thing for, for Preston watching that play is we've seen Yamagishi take some unbelievable touches, you know, plucking the balls out of the air today. And the most important one of them all, or what could be could have been one of the most important of them all, was uh, unfortunately a little, little millimetre or two away from the outstretched foot of Yamagishi. He's back on the ball now. Well, that's more like the Benji Levitikos we know and love, Ooh. shifting the ball very quickly and accelerating past his opponent. I'd love to see Preston's number seven get forward a little more from right back. It just seems as if they're forcing it a little bit at the moment. Down 1-0. Some of those passes from midfield are a little too ambitious and they just can't settle and gain territory in the opposition half. Jindari trying to win it back high up the field, which might alleviate that concern entirely. And a clear foul by Yamagishi on Paneris. Yeah, I think the problem perhaps that Levitigos has got at the current moment is that, you know, that so much of the A, so much of the play is congested on this left-hand side, which might suggest to you that he should get forward and make himself open for the switch. But Anastovsky is staying right on the last line of defense, just waiting. So the problem for Levitikos is he can push forward and try and create mm -hmm. that switch, but Anastovsky will just be wait, waiting and hoping to, uh, to prey on whatever quick turnovers do come about. So it's a, it's a bit of a catch-22 for Benji. Aaron trying to keep a close eye on Lethleen, the goal scorer. As well he might. Bozanovsky has Lambiris on this right-hand side. Came up with the goal line clearance earlier. Varga turns it over. Kandari exchanging passes with Stan Bolziev, who's fouled. Just breaking up the rhythm of the game here, Victory, with... These fouls, they're certainly not enough for bookings, but they're enough to halt the Preston build-up and allow the victory defence to reset. Very tactical fouls, I think, is, 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 the, way, is the best way you could describe them. I certainly, we, it doesn't have the look, this game, of, of two sides who are, who are going to leave anything out on this pitch. I think they'll push out as much of it as they possibly can, and, and that'll continue over the course of the game. Well, the rain's starting to come down now, and our decision to take shelter on this near side is perhaps vindicated. And we tried everything we could to get you a better vantage point today, but we're indebted to the work of our cameraman, Nathan, who he's doing his very best to get some decent pictures to you in trying circumstances. Always tough with these away venues. You never quite know what you're going to get. And today we've, got, we've been greeted by a closed media box.
Roxandic for Kandari. Carter has switched to the central striker role. Maybe a bit more physicality up front. Advantage paid off the handball of Lupanchu, and it's Chris Davies who cuts inside to unleash. It's too close to the goalkeeper, and Bullich has gone straight through on Ryu Yamagishi. Couldn't hold the shot from Davies. It was too hot to handle, and in an effort to make up for his mistake, he slid straight through the Japanese winger, and it will be a penalty for Preston. Yeah, it was a very strange decision from Marco Bullich. He, he could have dived out and used his arms to full advantage. He's, he's got that advantage over every other player except for Matthew Symes on the pitch. He may as well have used it and tried to dive out and get his body, maybe pick out a fat, you know, a free kick for him as, as Yamagishi was coming through. But instead, he decided to stick out that left leg, completely missed the ball, and took up, you know, cleaned out Yamagishi in the process. And that's a very obvious decision for Lockie Kivas to make and a very big chance now for Preston and for Robert Stambolziev to get himself and the team back in this game. It's Rob Stambolziev versus Marco Bulic. Crucial moment here for Preston. So look for a lifeline. Stambolziev, coolly done from the number 10. Sends the keeper the wrong way and makes it 1-1. It's all square here in MPL 3. And the crowd is going absolutely wild. These away fans are just amazing. They have lifted this side. And Stan Bolziev from 12 yards has lifted them level. The lifeline that the Lions needed, signed, sealed, and delivered by Robert Stambolziev. Well-placed well penalty into that bottom left. Marco Bulic moved in the opposite direction, guessed wrong. But even if he had have guessed right, Josh, I don't know if he would have got a palm down to that one. A well-taken penalty. And now Victory are trying themselves to move quickly. Leviticos clears away. It was Lethlian who was bounding down on goal. Play still alive. It was kept in there by Matthew Kandari. He'll move his way up the pitch. Goes down under the challenge. Of Jimmy Panaris. You just get a little simmer down after the explosion of energy and noise around the stadium that's come from that equalizing goal, courtesy of Robert Stambolziev. Honestly, that would that had genuine reverberations <laughs> on, on top of the, the Epping Stadium roof there. I was worried for a second that it might come off. I, I, I'm not being hyperbolic, it shook. <laughs> it shook, Josh. And that, got, was just, that was just an equaliser. I got chills, Lockie, and I'm not sure if they were thanks to the emotion of the occasion or thanks to the vibrations, the reverberations created by those fans who have this right-hand side of the grandstand absolutely rocking. Best fans in the state, Lockie. Maybe in the country. That's, now, what, that's what Marquez Walters said. Maybe in Australia. Louis Otsevsky, very worked up about something. Not sure what. He sees the game more clearly than we do, and that's why he's got his job and we have ours. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm not his water bottle. That's all <laughs> I can say. Very pleasant meeting with the, uh, <laughs> the boundary fence just then. Leviticos. Now Mosky. He feeds Yamagishi. Trying to get it onto his right boots. And Luca De Silva just got his body in between attacker and ball. And waited for the contact. That's yeah, it was pretty smart stuff. It He's was, been very savvy, the number six today. Yeah, it was very, very smart stuff from Luca De Silva. I think Yamagishi is a dynamic player. Sometimes that with players who do have such dynamism can, can sometimes result in a little bit of over exuberance, but yeah, De Silva has been very impressive at the base of that midfield with the captain's armband, ignoring obviously the, the challenge on Noam Sekolovsky. He's got some good experience to his name, De Silva. He left Australia as a 12 year old to uh, go and be a part of the Benfica youth setup there for a few years, then moved on to Willem II in the Netherlands, and now Willem back at Svey, Lucky is Svey. Yeah, my bad, my bad. As our Dutch fans would surely tell us. I don't. And Carter's 
Got to go into the book here for a late challenge on De Silva, who makes sure the referee knows all about it. Just flipping the ankles. He was nowhere near the ball, in fairness. Yeah, we, a little bit of a studs on the foot there. You could maybe have overheard on the effects microphones, maybe even on our microphones, someone behind us saying, he didn't touch him. I'm, I'm sorry, person behind me who I don't know. He, Terrence he Carter definitely, definitely did, did touch, touch him. him. So that's several yellow cards in the contest today. We've got De Silva in the book. James Harron, of course. Terence Carter joining them. And I believe Marco Bullich may well have been yellow carded for the challenge for the penalty as well. So, Lockie Keepers has been very busy. Here's Lethlin, who's been busy too. Scored the opener for this Melbourne Victory youth side. I'm sure you remember, Lockie, the meeting between these two teams earlier in the season. Oh, yes. I remember it very well. Unfortunately, I wasn't there, but I, was, I felt like I was there because, of my, because I was watching the live stream. Absolutely sensational occasion. The attendance in excess of 3,000, pushing four. And the goal from Karl Barishevich, sadly absent today due to injury. A volley from all of 30 metres. We're treated to such... Spectacular effort today. I'll be very glad of the long drive to Epping. I think the, the silver lining is no Borisovic, so you do do lose that uh, one player with that eye for a spectacular goal. But Preston has shown that they are capable of, you know, other players are more than capable of providing that. I mean, was it Matthew Kandari who launched that rocket last week against City? was indeed. And then Bradley Blumenthal off the bench with a pile driver of his own. That's two weeks ago now. Here's Wilson for victory. They're building well here, the Buck youth. Davies winning that one back as it trickles out of the reach of Panaris. Carter just playing a few mind games with the young Melbourne victory centre half. Back with Bullich now. Ishak, Lupanchu, and now De Silva, Panaris. Well, that will actually be a free kick there, much to the dismay of Benjamin Leviticos. He felt he played the ball. Keepers felt otherwise. Wilson for Ishak. Lambiris. Reminder, this game is available on multiple platforms today. We've got it streaming on Twitter, on Twitch. The FNR platforms on the FNR Football Nation Radio YouTube, if you prefer to watch on there. Or indeed on the Preston Lions Facebook page, where you could be involved in the discussion in the comments section. Varga winning the loose ball and taken off him by Anna Stovsky, who unleashed a rasping drive. But Matthew Symes well positioned to beat it away for a corner. Didn't think too long about it. Did Darcy Anastovsky just saw the ball roll towards him and thought that is all the invitation I need with a little bit of gap between myself and the covering defenders. It could have very easily caught Matthew Symes out given how early and, and, and slightly surprising the shot was. But as we've seen time and again today, Matthew Symes equal to the task. It was just great anticipation by Symes. It should have been a much more difficult save had he been standing in the center of his goal. But... Just moved a metre or two to his right and made it much more straightforward. Left lean in the box. His physicality has caused problems. Anastovsky striking. And now Mosky blocking. Captain putting his body in the way.
Mosky in a rock sandwich with the challenge, but Varga manages to pick out Anastovsky, who is rifling shots goalwards, and so is William Wilson there. Gave Sekolovsky a little shove after the fact, but Preston Lions veteran, five years in the A-League with Perth Glory. I might be underselling that. Got to double check his uh, A-League history, but so much experience under his belt, he uh, is not getting sucked into that kind we'll, of nonsense. We'll put it this way. It's the, the kind of A-League experience that the entire Melbourne Victory Eleven and substitutes dream of having, Josh, I, I, I think would be the best way to, to put into words the experience that Nom Sekolovsky brings. You know, William Wilson taking a pop there from distance, getting it outside the uh, boundary confines of Epping Stadium. Could be forgiven for having a shot, though. He's scored three already this season, which is a very acceptable tally for a deeper-lying midfielder. As Joseph Karen holds two minutes of extra time aloft. And maybe one more chance in the victory. They tried to poke it through to Lethlian. That ball from Jimmy Pineris offline. And now we do see Benji Leviticos marching his way up the field. And really his first drive forward. And an instant impact. Gets a free kick. But Preston can send in for more than likely the last chance of what's been a gripping opening 45 minutes of football, I'd say, Josh. I'm just correcting our clock here. 45 minutes and 30 seconds played, so it's just under a minute remaining for Preston to muster something. They've sent bodies forward for the set piece. It's in from Leviticos. Wozanowski, the towering centre half, wins that header. And Yamagishi with an excellent challenge on Anastovsky, keeping the ball in the corner, hemmed in. One minute to play in the first half, under the driving rain. Which has really picked up now. I'm not, I'm not sure if you can make it out on camera. But it is really pelting down. Long throw from Sekolovsky, flicked on by Carter. Varga couldn't quite clear it. Ishak could. Rock Sandic. Stan Bolziev, a chance to cross. It's Davies at the back post, but he couldn't meet it. Kandari whipped it in again. Everyone checking their watches as it ticks down to 10 seconds. A minimum of 10 seconds, we should say. It's all at the referee's discretion, of course. And Leviticos will take a longer throw to Woods Carter. His layoff was straight to Josh Varga, unfortunately. And that will be that for the first half. Two good teams. Plenty of bite in this one. Some real simmering tension between the two sets of players. We've had yellow cards galore. We've had sly tackles flying in. And we've had two goals to report on here. Ryan Lethley and for Melbourne Victory opening the scoring after a defensive mistake from the usually immaculate Andrea Roxandich. And then a penalty kick. Ryu Yamagishi getting to the ball first, ahead of the goalkeeper, Marko Bulic, who took him down. And Rob Stambolziev, cool as you like from the spot, sending the ball left and the keeper right to make it 1-1. It's a crucial clash here at Epping Stadium, and it is still far, far from over. Josh Parrish here on play-by-play, -play, and alongside me, Lockie Flanagan. What did you make of that, Lockie? Yeah, it's been a game with electric intensity so far, Josh. It really, really has been an entertaining spectacle with chances falling either side. Melbourne victory probably creating the most clear cut of the two over the course of the half. Uh, Matthew Symes has probably had more work to do. Marco Bullet, you really... The most work that he's done is a few few half clearances and watching Rob Stambolzi have put a penalty past him. But it's been a great half. I, I think there is more to come in this game. We expected competitiveness. It's delivered, but it's got more to give. 
Catherine Summer says, gripping commentary. Well, thank you, Catherine. Uh, it's been a gripping contest and altogether heightened by the presence of these wonderful Preston away fans who've created an absolute racket, a raucous atmosphere a great at Epping soundtrack. Stadium. A great soundtrack. It has been a fan fabulous accompaniment to this fixture. We're indebted to Northern Motor Group Bandura for providing us with the chance to bring you these pictures live. They are proud supporters of the Preston Lions, and we applaud the ambition of the club and of NMG for making these broadcasts possible. Every away game for the rest of the season, streamed live on FNR and on the Preston Facebook page. So make sure you show your support if you're looking for a new vehicle. Head on down and patronise the Northern Motor Group Bandura driving Melbourne's North. We'll take a break here at Epping Stadium. The halftime score, Melbourne victory one, Preston Lions one.
And we're back here at Epping Stadium, welcoming all our viewers from across the country and indeed around the world. Let us know where you're watching from. It's a crucial MPL3 clash between the Preston Lions and the Melbourne Victory. It's been gripping stuff, really tense encounter throughout the first half. Two goals to report on, Ryan Leplian going through one-on-one -on -one and finishing confidently past the excellent Matthew Symes, who has made several very, very good saves from the penalty spot. In response, Rob Stambolziev converting after Ryu Yamagishi was fouled by Melbourne Victory goalkeeper Marco Bulic. Here's Davies on the ball, winning a throw. And today, to make this broadcast possible, we have to thank Northern Motor Group Bandura and indeed all the Preston Lions major sponsors. You can see all those sponsors rotating through in the bottom left corner of your screen. Every single logo from every single contributor and there's a reason for it. it there's a community approach here at Preston. Over a hundred sponsors Levitikos commits the foul. And if you would like to jump on board and see your logo in the corner of the live stream and around the ground at BT Connor Reserve, Amanda Contact is actually playing left back today. <laughs> Noam Sekolovsky, the number 19, has taken on a new role this season as sponsorship manager. Is there anything he can't do out of curiosity? <laughs> Can't keep up with Lamburis at the moment. He's put an excellent ball in. Oh. And Lethlian with a horror miss. A massive let off for Preston at the start of this second half. The pace of Thomas Lamburis. He put it on a platter, but the big number nine could not convert. Yeah, we were busy pumping up his tyres, Noam Sekolovsky, but no, no sooner were we doing that. Had he been caught napping on that right-hand side, and so too with the Preston backline through the middle, as Lethlian really had a tap in. All he had to do was place that, put it low, you know, into the bottom left corner, past Symes. You know, the only thing really Symes could have done is pull out another unbelievable save. He is capable of doing that, but he should have taken the keeper out of the equation, and at the very least, Lethlian should have had that on the frame of goal. Completely spooned it over. Here's Panaris for victory. Palmed away by Symes once again. Rather telegraphed his intentions with the curling shot. Anastovsky crossing in. Stambolziev heading away and the game is stopped for an injury to Matthew Kandari. It's a potentially costly one. Look at the Preston bench today. Had a question whether Brad Blumenthal is among the substitutes, and I can indeed confirm that. The number nine scored an absolute cracker against Melbourne City off the pine. Number 11, Marquez Walters. Number 15, Nathan Tulevsky. And number 17, Jamie Perchevsky are the substitutes. We also had number 33, Connor Cass, amongst the alternates today. But it seems as if he's actually unwell and may not play a part. Saw him walk down the tunnel early. We thought he might be preparing to come on, Lockie, but turns out he's actually just feeling sick. So get well soon, Connor Cass. It's a shame, I think. The last thing Preston need is more players unavailable, not playing. There's a pretty big list of important ones currently not featuring. It doesn't help when you've got one falling ill at half time as well. And that man we mentioned... Bradley Blumenthal will be introduced for the injured Matthew Kandari. Kandari was excellent in the first half, had several valuable contributions from the base of midfield. And they'll have to restructure the midfield ever so slightly. Looks as if Yamagishi is going to left back, where he's deputised before. Sekolovsky 
to central defence, which after that burst on the wing from Lambiris, he might be relieved about. And Brad Blumenthal takes up Yamagishi's position on the left flank. So a forced reshuffle for the Preston Lions. Put, that would put Rock Sandwich into midfield as well. Yes, indeed. So it is Rock Sandwich who stepped into Kandari's shoes in that defensive midfield role, and Sekolovsky and Harren are the central defensive duo. Rock Sandwich more than capable and probably more comfortable in holding midfield. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I was going to say, Josh. It's always unfortunate to lose a player to injury, but I think that reshuffle is probably a good one for Preston. It's probably, I think, given some of the as good of a, a player and a person as he is, we do see some of the limitations of a, a player the vintage of Noam Sekolovsky can, can present, especially when you've got a, a speedster like Darcy Anastovsky charging you down, maybe to get Yamagishi on that side, provide... A bit more two-way running and getting Sekolovsky into the center of defense where he always does look very comfortable. Maybe maybe that's a good thing for Preston, I think, from a, from a tactical perspective. Hanging firmly in the balance. Shoulder challenge from Rock Sandwich, and then he sticks the leg out trying to repair the damage. And instead, added more salt into the wound and a yellow card to his name. That's Rock Sandage going into the book after that strong challenge. Yellow card number two for the big man who jogs his way backwards into the defensive line as Preston have got a free kick to defend now. If I'm not mistaken, the third Preston player to be booked today after Terence Carter and James Harron. It's been a very physical and at times ill-tempered contest between these two sides who are vying for promotion. Vargas ball in, Harren's header away. And now Wilson will try and outpace Chris Davies. He goes to ground. But Davies, who started his career as a defender, and some savvy, savvy stuff, just using his body to edge Wilson towards the byline. A frustrating one to watch as a neutral Wilson. He went down seeking contact and and a penalty call that I just don't think was ever there. And if, if he had have kept his feet, he may well have had the pace to keep the ball in play and could have cut it back. So a very interesting decision. He's Stan Bolziev. He has Blumenthal to his left. And the pass is over hit. Robert Stan Bolziev. Had every opportunity to send Brad Blumenthal clean through on goal. And he just didn't put the right weight behind that through ball. He's scarcely been able to fault his energy today, Rob Stambols, yet. But that pass through to Brad Blumenthal just had a little bit too much zip on it, unfortunately, especially the surface being as rain hit as it has been today. It'll skid always a little bit more. In the end, it was an easy collection for Bullich. It could have been a very different turn of events had that pass had just a little bit less heat. Speaking of heat on a pass, Josh Vargas touched just now. It was absolutely thumped into him, and he cushioned it beautifully, the number 10. Very technically gifted. It's Lambiris. Anastovsky. He favours his left boot and uses it to spray a pass to Jimmy Panaris. Jinking inside past Levitikos. It's a great run from Panaris. He's still going and eventually ran out of room. Tried to do it all himself, the number seven. That was a fun little one-two between him and Benji Levitikos. The two number sevens going toe-to-toe -to -toe and the seven in Navy Blue winning out. Albeit for a brief moment, I think Symes did well to come off his line. Balance... Risk and reason. Do enough to, to put off Panaris. Put the touch over the goal line, but certainly a very exciting move down the left flank. As Preston prepare another substitution. Lucky, I can tell you we've got viewers from all over the place. Catherine has a sister watching in 
Chichester in the UK, I think representing the Harren clan. Stan Bowles here. Found the gap, but it was an awkward height for Chris Davies. Wilson, lovely turn from Varga, that's classy. But Harren read him like an open book. Tracy Lee says, thank you to all the wonderful sponsors who have allowed all of us interstate families and fans who couldn't be there to watch this live. She's up on the Gold Coast, I believe. Bernadette is loving the live stream and commentary from Townsville, North Queensland. Probably enjoying what I can only imagine is her son's performance in goal today as well, going off the surname. He's been excellent, Matthew Symes. He's kept Preston in this match. He's not gone all their way today, the league leaders. Now Mosky. Yamagishi will offer some attacking impetus from left fullback. If he, even if he does favour his right foot. Carter. There's Lambiris in his way. We'll have another substitution for Preston. It will be Noam Sekolovsky replaced. And Jamie Perchevsky will be coming on. And a warm round of applause. Let's listen to that. For the legendary Noam Butka Sekolovsky. He returns the favour, and the fans absolutely love it, and they love him. What a person to have representing this great club. Blumenthal. Great turn. The left foot cross was a little under hit. We have a corner here now, and the question is, who's taking it? Well, it doesn't matter whether it's with the forehead or with the, the long limbs. It's been very difficult getting crosses past Matthew Bosanowski today. It's a frustrating sight if you're a Preston fan. The uh, silver lining, though, is he keeps playing like this. He could well end up featuring for the national team. So every cloud a silver lining. And there's a red card. It looks like for Blumenthal, an incident off the ball between Blumenthal and Bullich. Seems as if the Preston substitute who's just come onto the field just kicked out ever so slightly. And referee Lockie Kivers has dished out a straight red. So Preston down to 10. You always want your substitutes to come off the bench and make an impact, but I don't think that that is the impact in the literal and the figurative way that Lewisevsky had in mind when he brought Vlad Blumenthal onto the field of play. The little tap, it wasn't too hard, but unfortunately it was still contact with Marco Bullich, and Lockie Kivas was already watching that contest. He saw it straight away, and from there had a pretty easy decision to make. So the equation becomes even more difficult for Preston. Still level, but down a man. And they're outnumbered here on the counter-attack. Levitikos trying to keep Anastovsky in his sights. It's Panaris for victory, and it's another great save. Matthew Symes with his feet this time. And a cynical foul from William Wilson, who's... Escape to booking. Another 1v1. Another save. It should have been better placement on the finish, but take nothing away from Matthew Symes. Again, proving Preston's saviour. This time with the feet. I think his head's the only part he hasn't saved a, go <laughs> hasn't saved a shot on goal with today. Oh, the clouds have parted. The sun is out. All four seasons and then some in one day. A 
This is Melbourne for you. Ishak. Manastovsky. The back heel doesn't fool Levitikos. And he was clipped. Preston will have a free kick on the halfway line. We're just re-examining that red card footage, and it does seem as if Brad Blumenthal did indeed stomp on the foot of the victory goalkeeper. Just lost his cool, and he's left his side in the lurch. Not the first red card we've seen in a Preston game in this part of the world. Bozanovsky with a well-timed slide. Same could be said of Wilson, but Yamagishi, plenty of pace and deftly done to win the throw in. Roxandic for Stan Bolzier. Carter. Puts his head down and looks for the byline. It's Terence Carter to cross. And it will be another corner for Preston. The last time they had a set piece. They ended up down a man. So it's Terence Carter assigned with the task of crowding the keeper this time around. I think all eyes are on that particular interaction now. Yes. But more importantly, Preston have numbers up from the back. Harren, Perchevsky, Rock Sandich. Davies dangerous in the air as well. It's Perchevsky! Oh, it's just over the bar. What a save from Bullich. He hung in the air. The ball seemed to travel in slow motion there. And Bullich getting his fingertips on it to palm it over the crossbar. Well, Marco Bullich has had most of the day to watch the performance of Matthew Symes and said, anything you can do, I can do better. Leviticos. I think that was more of a challenge than a pass or a clearance, but it's worked out very well for the victory. Anastovsky, well, you need something a little more clever than that to beat Matthew Symes today. Adventurous to say the least. Trying to channel Patrick Schick. Please don't, don't mention that man's name to me. The Scotsman alongside me, absolutely bristling at the mere mention of... I'm gonna have to turn my mic off and have a little <laughs> sob now. <laughs> Quickly restarted by victory. Still 1-1 one, one here. But what drama has unfolded before us? 10 v 11 in favour of the home side, the Melbourne victory. Paneris, Lambiris in low. That could have ended up, frankly, anywhere. And thankfully, for James Harron and Preston, it was wide of the near post. A bit of a mix up between goalkeeper and central defender. Symes had come out to collect, but obviously. Didn't shout loud enough for James Harron to hear, who went safety first. Or can you call that safety first if it could have very nearly <laughs> ended into an own goal? He tried to clear or it in dangerous any case. collision. It's last ditch defending. Varga gets a second bite at this one. He cuts it back for Panaris to cross. Left leans there. Pachevsky in the way. And that's excellent from Terence Carter who picks out Stan Bolzier. They're outnumbered here on the break, Preston, but it's a beautiful ball for now Mosky. 
He tees up Davies, but the ball is too high to control. Yamagishi to let rip on goal. And Bullwich beats it away. But the fans sound their appreciation for a really deft, slick counter-attack. The 10 men are not done yet. Yeah, if there's one thing you can't fault in this Preston Lions side, it's their ticker. They absolutely will not give up. They won't stop trying, whether it's 11, 10, 9 men. They'll keep going until the final whistle, and they very nearly conjured something akin to a fairy tale. That chest down from now Mosky was set up for a volley. It didn't quite pan out the right way, but Preston is still knocking on the door and searching for a second. Levitikos with the corner, Davies at the back stick, Ishak chests it out for another victory corner. Preston have the linesman's keen eye to thank for that decision. Stambolziev with the in-swinger. The goalkeeper's up. Now Mosky on the follow-up. Davies. A few shouts for handball there. Mostly from the fans. Another Preston corner. The visitors continue to pile on the pressure as they leave it 1v1 at the back. If you're one of the 260, or if you're part of that 260 and you've just joined us, can you believe it? It's Preston, the team playing with 10. It's Harren off the goal line. It won't go in from Rock Sandwich. The victory defenders celebrates. I think it was Luca De Silva who was in the way. Can you believe it? No goal. It was De Silva and then a brilliant stop from Bullwich. Said before, Josh, that Preston Lions were knocking on the door. I think they've pulled out the battering ram now. They're trying their utmost to grab a second on which they could sit. But it was the work of the victory captain, Luca De Silva, that denied them. Davies with the flicked header. Rock Sandwich couldn't get there ahead of Wilson. Bit of a size mismatch there on the right flank. Yamagishi did well to hold up the attack. I really rate this contribution from Alex Pandov. Best goalkeeper since Phil Trionides. That's high praise. If you're a long time fan of Preston, for Matthew Symes. Lambiris into touch. And a reminder that this broadcast would not be possible without the support of Northern Motor Group and all of Preston Lions sponsors and contributors. Davies wanted a free kick. Play goes on with De Silva for victory. Wilson. Varga, they've got numbers forward here. Wilson gets the return with Panaris, but Preston managed to slow down the attack ever so slightly, and that one's heavy and to no one in particular, a miscommunication between Panaris and Wilson. Yeah, well, there have been two players, William Wilson and Jimmy Panaris, who have impressed me today in different ways, but they were at sixes and sevens. Connection between the two teammates a little bit off. I just wonder... We've seen Preston make a few subs. Obviously, one of those as a result of an unfortunate injury to Carl Borisovic. But Daniel Greystone and the Melbourne Victory coaching staff yet to make a sub. And they've got one of their only players with A-League experience is sitting waiting on the bench in the form of Gianluca Anucci. Maybe there's a, a load management issue or something, but... Anastovsky will go into the book for that. He... That's a late challenge on Yamagishi. It was an excellent switch from Levitikos. Didn't have much room to play it. Just going back to the substitution, Josh, he seems like the obvious choice to bring on 
against a team where you've got a man advantage, the lines are stretched, players are starting to tire, there's gaps to exploit. Who better to have, really, at this level than Gianluca mm. Iannucci? And he is standing up on the bench at the moment. There may even be a double sub in the offing here for Melbourne Victory. We'll keep an eye on their bench. They've got to use it sooner or later. Well, they don't have to, but you'd expect them to. Davies will be called over to receive a lecture. Take this brief break in play to thank the major contributors for the Preston Lions. Atlantic Caravans, Electrical Connectivity, Jenna Steele, MS Designer Living, Harvey Norman and Fusion Graduate Consultancy. Bozanowski clears. It's been really good today, Bozanowski. Really, really solid. Very surprised that he's not yet received a, a chance for minutes at A-League level. He's featured on the bench, but nothing more. For a team like Melbourne Victory, who have struggled so much with centre-backs, there he is again. I'm very surprised that he hasn't been given more of a look in. Perchevsky controls. Sandage with the bounce pass. And the big diag is aimed at Chris Davies. Osanowski wasn't comfortable leaving it for his goalkeeper. Davies wins it back. Leviticos might have a crack himself, and William Wilson making up the ground at a rapid pace. You know what, when, he, <laughs> when Benji Leviticos opened up the angle for that shot, Josh, I bet he was thinking about the Lions' Den scoring blessing, where every player that seems to come on manages to score. And he thought, I've got the luck on my side, I'll have a pop. That one going nowhere near the goal. In fact, taking a deflection off the first player in between Benji's shot and the goal. But I'm sure he'll have another crack. Marquez Walters kindly trying to get us involved on that. If you're trying to convince your coach that you need to be brought on off the bench, a touch like that is not necessarily <laughs> the way to do it. Oh, dear. All fun and games. Looked around sheepishly, did Marquez. Here's Yamagishi. Wozanowski in the way. Collision between Davies and Bullich off the ball, which given the history of this goalkeeper and Preston Strikers is a concerning one to say the least, but it seemed incidental and play will go on. Change being prepared by the Melbourne victory. It is indeed. It's the one we foreshadowed as well. Gianluca Iannucci standing on the halfway line. Fourth official punching his number in at the moment. Now the chase is on between Perchevsky and Lethling. He steps inside. And that one is shanked well wide at the Preston goal. Change will come now. Coming off Jimmy Panaris, the number seven. And coming on, a player who announced himself onto the professional stage in some style during Melbourne Victory's Asian Champions League campaign is Gianluca Iannucci. Jimmy Panaris put in a good shift on that left flank. It's been a great battle today with Benji Leviticos. He's got a very fresh assignment at Preston fullback and a very difficult one too in the form of Gianluca Iannucci. Lupanchu with the switch. Lambiris to chase it down. The tension is palpable here. As the 10 men of Preston Try and make up for the man disadvantage. Iannucci loves a one-on-one -on -one situation. Ochevsky intercepting. Oksandic. Carter now. Keeps the play moving with a little back heel. But Varga, the little playmaker, with a fantastic challenge. Now Wilson for victory. And he couldn't keep his shot down. 
real chance for the home side. Again, Wilson found with a chance to shoot from range. He does really well to wriggle his way in between the middle and front third of the pitch and find those gaps. He's not finding the gap between Matty Symes and the goal at the minute. There's another sub substitution does come through and it is the goal scorer Ryan Lethley being replaced and on to replace him is the big target man number 14 Adem Juratovic Lupanchu's header Levitikos has to be careful here Inucci made more of that than really necessary we go on well he sprung to his feet perhaps gave the game away yeah, I didn't think there was very much contact at all from now Mosky in that challenge he made the most of it Gianluca Iannucci well, this kind of situation this is the pressure cooker where titles and promotions are won and lost A red card for Brad Blumenthal. He was only on the pitch for a matter of a few minutes. Has left Preston with a major hill to climb. Still level. Iannucci. Good defending from Leviticos, but frustrated that he couldn't keep the ball in play and spring the other way. De Silva. Lambiris. Pachevsky intercepts. Now Stan Bolziev in a deep position. Yamagishi couldn't find Carter. And victory continue to put the squeeze on this Preston back line. It's Iannucci. Wilson goes down. Iannucci. Oksandich. Sparing lunge to try and win the ball back, but they managed to repel the victory in midfield for now. Lambiris has got plenty of space and time here, but ops against the early cross. Wilson. Yamagishi in the way, and now Carter with a deft dribble. This way, and then the other. Leaves Anastovsky in the dust, but can't find Davies. Been very improved, I think, in this second half as Terence Carter didn't feature too much in the opening 45 as so much of that play came down the left flank while he was standing and watching over on the right, but definitely imposed himself on this contest and been more willing to pick up from deep and carry the ball. He's really taken a lot of the heat off Chris Davies and the other players in the front three have been able to find some more openings as a result of the industry that Carter's provided. Nathan Talevsky being prepared. The youngster in a man's body. He is physically so imposing. And especially late in games, can really bully his opponents. He comes on for Stan Bolziev. A round of applause for the Preston goal scorer who netted in the first half from the penalty spot. And all Preston fans will remember Nathan Tulevsky's contribution in assisting James Poole for a late winner at BT Connor Reserve earlier in the season. We'll be hoping for Similar impact. He's got a lot of ground to cover defensively, though, too. Mark says, put on some fresh legs. Well, Atsetsky has just done so. Wozanowski for victory. Long diagonal searching for Iannucci and finding him. He's up against Leviticos. 
back with Luca De Silva, the victory captain for the day. And finding Lambiris. Seems a pacey customer, but Yamagishi had his measure. Gerartovic getting a touch, the victory substitute. Ishak. Lupanchu. Varga. He's taken down after he released the ball, and James Harron has to be very, very careful on a yellow card. Here's Varga for victory. Curls one into the danger area, and Harron heads away. Again, Harron going safety first. Could possibly have left that for Matty Symes. Could have just clutched it straight in the bread basket. Looked like that was where it was heading, if it made it to the Preston goalkeeper. But instead, it's a corner to defend. Work to do for the Preston Lions. I've got Matty Symes' cousin watching here. He says, save a goal for me. He's saved a few already. He's done more than his fair share. As Louis Artsevsky receives a little bit of a telling off from the fourth, fourth official. Nucci trying to flick that goalwards. Varga for De Silva. And that is over the goal and almost over the back fence. Not struck in the right way, was that one? It was more of a, a deep-lying midfielder's pitching wedge type ball over the top as opposed to a strike on goal with real venom. James Harron just misjudges that one. Surely a handball against Juratovic. Well, not so. And a foul not given either. Davies lost the ball in its flight. The counter-attack breaks down. Roxandic winning it back, and he might have a strike himself. He doesn't score many goals, Andrea Roxandic. Be a great time to come up with a collector's item. Can't begrudge him for trying to add his name to the number of party pieces that Preston have produced this season. But Chris Davies on the right-hand side with Mason Ishak to attack. Probably was the, the more sensible option, but sensible isn't always the right way in football. De Silva, Ishak. Preston have little choice but to allow victory the majority of possession now. They've moved the ball really well, these A-League youth sides. They're very well drilled. Down to 10 men, pressing high up the park. He's pretty much out of the question. Seven minutes to play. William Wilson for victory. Anastovsky loses out. Davies. Carter. Perchevsky's joined the attack. He was in the box waiting for a cross that never came. Yamagishi finds Perchevsky in an unfamiliar midfield position. Harren with the diagonal. Wozanowski uncontested. Now Juratovic. Harren wrestling with Juratovic, and there's a player down for victory. He's down for a while. Lockie Kivas allowed play to continue. I think it was Darcy Anastovsky over on the far side who's struggling. Preston, they're sort of, they can't afford to get too many numbers running in behind, moving into the box, so they are sort of forced to put balls into the mixer and hope that they can nick something, but Matt Bosanovsky is just vacuuming, hoovering even everything up that comes into the air. 
collects it all in a very composed performance from the 20-year-old in the center of defense. Even even when you know, we saw it seconds before when Terence Carter was trying to take him on at pace. The limbs are just so long that he's able to, to, to get the interception with the legs outstretched. It's a very difficult assignment, but a very promising one if you're a victory coach watching or maybe even a supporter of the Macedonian national team. Just as one of your under-21s playing right there. A few players in this division are eligible. Also been interest in Stefan Kolikovsky. Why is his trade from Melbourne City, of course? Be a very no longer a MPL 3 player, now an A-League superstar. Would be a very fair call indeed. And, uh, Terence Carter struggling a bit here as well. I know that he'll be forced to leave the field temporarily. Seems to be saying to Coach Lewisewski that he is okay. Just feeling a little bit. He has put himself about in this half and he comes back onto the field of play now. But a great relief for Preston to not have to defend with nine. Definitely. Bosanowski on the ball. The Macedonian Euro qualifier start in September. And he's Ishak playing like this. having his shirt pulled. Carter is on a booking. They really need to calm things down, Preston. Last thing they need is another red card in this game. Brad Blumenthal already dismissed. Iannucci felt he was fouled. Perchevsky. It's a really physical contest out there. It is fierce and competitive. Maybe the wrong pass from Davies put Yamagishi under a bit of pressure on his less favoured left foot. De Silva. Miscontrol. A mistake. And can Preston capitalise now? Maybe not. Carter doesn't look 100%. Really lacking that usual burst of acceleration. Varga. Perchevsky flying in. He goes into the book as well. And the question for Preston now is really... Who isn't on a booking as opposed to who is? It was a nervous one for Pachevsky because it was a yellow card and it probably wouldn't have been genuine fear of a red card coming out. But whenever a referee reaches into the back pocket like Lockie Heavers did to produce a yellow, you always get a little bit nervous. Certainly the kind of challenge that referees would prefer to crack down on. Scores from around the top flight in MPL Victoria today. Melbourne Knights leading Heidelberg 2-1. Just gone ahead at the Olympic Village. And St Albans down 4-0 against their bogey side, Port Melbourne. Iannucci. Bozanowski forward. He wins the header. So dangerous in the air. Amounts to nothing in the end. Ishak. Lambiris. Another change being prepared. So we hear the clack of the fourth official's board. Varga nips in ahead of Roxandic. Cuts it back in the direction of Iannucci. And now Juratovic goes down. Kiva's uninterested in penalty appeals. Heart in mouth moment for the Preston fans watching. Harry. Yeah. Brilliant find for Leviticos. Carter will be offside here. And that's disappointing. As Harren did so well to advance with the ball and sneak it through a gap square for Leviticos. Lambiris for victory. Had to soak up waves and waves of pressure from the home side who have plenty of talent at their disposal, certainly technically speaking. Lupanchu. Kochevsky got a flick on it. Iannucci centres. 
And it's straight to Chris Davies. Terence Carter around the corner for now Mosky. Four minutes of stoppage time up on the referee's board. Cut out well, back to Ishak. Now it's back at the feet of Luca De Silva. Iannucci on the ball. Wants to find the gap. Instead pushes wide to Lambiris. And Juratovic, really the only player in the penalty area. They've got Anastovsky at the back stick. He's recovered from his earlier knock. Wilson with the strike. And Matthew Symes comes up big again. A save you'd expect him to make. He's made a few today that no one would expect a goalkeeper at this level to be equal to. You joked before, Josh, about how Rock Sandich, or it might even been James, it might even have been James Harrant who had his bacon saved by Matty Symes, owes him a beer. I think the whole, whole team probably owes him one, a full round. Corners over here, and Tulefsky heads away. No one forward for Preston. Time for De Silva to measure his cross. Anastovsky, Harren at the near post. And now Chris Davies looks up and tries to find someone, anyone. Terence Carter presenting, putting Ishak under pressure. He looks to be really struggling here, Terence Carter. Trying desperately to keep himself moving. Leviticos lets it run. That was a groan that went up among the Preston fans as they feared a repeat of Melbourne Victory's opening goal. And Matthew Symes eats up a few extra seconds. One minute to play. A point in these circumstances. Preston would take that every day of the week. Tulevsky. De Silva. Good slide from Perchevsky, who's been excellent since he's been introduced. That will be a corner kick. The cross from Lambier is deflected behind. Nervous moments as we're into added time on added time. Preston with 10 men, remember. Red card dished out to the substitute, Bradley Blumenthal, early in the second half. Victory forward for one last push. It's Anastovsky, it's Bozanovsky, and it's a goal kick. And a sigh of relief for the away supporters. All eyes on Lockie Kivas now. It's up to him how long this game continues. We've played the four minutes and then some. Times goes short to Harron, who will thump this one straight to De Silva. Rock Sandwich with a crucial win. It's Lambiris for victory. Running it, the stand-in left back, Yamagishi. Inuchi with De Silva. And victory have run out of time. Preston Lions cling on at the death. For a hard fought point. Away from home at Epping Stadium. Down a man thanks to the red card. And indebted to their goalkeeper, Matthew Symes, who came up big time and time and time again. Under these circumstances, Lockie, I think a point is fair and certainly. They've worked hard for it. I think the cheers from the Preston fans at full time said it all, Josh. They know what a big performance that was to keep a hold of the point. Once they went down to 10, 
You're expecting that victory might hit them on the counter, but this Preston team, or what remained of it on the pitch, stood up, gave it 110% and managed to keep things level. And over the course of a long season, that point, it might seem disappointing on the league position of these two respective sides, but it counts for a lot in the context over the course of a very long season. And Matty Symes, as you said, Josh, is the player that Preston have to thank both fans and his teammates for that point they do take. An important one ahead of a very important month of fixtures, of course, up against an unawarding next Friday night at home. And then North Sunshine Eagles away. That's an absolutely colossal game. And then Dufton to follow it up. So a huge month of fixtures to come for Preston, who will be buoyed, I think, all things considered, by a character-building performance, or, or a character-confirming performance, really, for Preston today with 10 men for so long. And applause for the Preston Macedonia fans who've made the trip, who've kicked every ball and really lifted this side under difficult circumstances. They've played their part. And so have these exhausted players. Final score here as Preston retain the top spot in MPL 3 on goal difference. Is Melbourne victory one, Preston Lions one. A massive thank you to the Northern Motor Group, the Preston Lions major sponsors, Atlantic Caravans, Jenna Steele, Harvey Norman, Fusion Graduate Consultancy, MS Designer Living. Wouldn't be possible to bring you these pictures without them. Big thank you to you, my co-commentator, Lockie Flanagan. It's been a pleasure. It has been an absolute pleasure. And we will wind this stream down now. Go and have a hot drink and try and unwind from all the tension of that 45 minutes. Preston, away from home, down to 10. Pick up a point that could prove crucial that the promotion race in this division is neck and neck. Thank you for watching.